Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Go ahead and share this page and like the page because we're talking about thyroid today. So when we look at thyroid, um, the conventional model used for hypothyroidism is when you have a symptom, let's say you're very fatigued, your hair is falling out, right? Um, you're having issues with um, dry skin, constipation, they might go ahead and run a thyroid stimulating hormone test or TSH test. So the conventional model, when you have overt thyroid symptoms, that is when they're going to check. They're going to check only for TSH and maybe possibly a free T4 or a total T4. They only check maybe a couple of markers when you have overt symptoms. So if you have a test that shows it's positive for a TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone and it's positive, meaning your TSH number is greater than maybe 4.5 or some labs will have it at 5.5. So when you have an overt symptom where your TSH is elevated and then that's positive, then you are diagnosed with hypothyroid. Now, remember my other videos, I said Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the number one cause for hypothyroid, meaning it's an autoimmune process that's going on that's attacking your thyroid, right? So they're positive for TSH, but you're hypothyroid, but yet you don't know the exact cause of this hypothyroid. They need to run TPO and TG or thyroid globulin antibodies in order to figure out why you have hypothyroid. Once we can figure that out, let's say in the conventional model, they diagnose you with hypothyroid, your TSH is above 4.5 or 5, right? Then they go, okay, we need to prescribe thyroid replacement hormone. So this can be Synthroid, Levothyroxine, uh, Cytomel, there's a variety of different uh, thyroid hormones on the, mar on the market now, okay? So when we take it and go, okay, we're gonna give you thyroid replacement hormone and your TSH becomes normal, right? They go, we're done, right? It doesn't matter if you have other symptoms, your TSH is normal and we're done. And they might check it once a year If you check your TSH once a year, during that year, if your TSH goes up or it goes too low, it doesn't matter. They check once a year and they spot check in, they go, oh, you're normal when we check it. Then we don't need to change your medication. So that's, this is what happens. Let's say they put you on thyroid replacement hormone and TSH is abnormal, right? TSH is either too low or too high, then they're gonna change the dosage. And they're going to go on this merry-go-round of chasing TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. It's too low, they're going to lower the medication. It's too high, you're going to increase the medication. They go round and round uh, chasing thyroid stimulating hormone and trying to normalize thyroid stimulating hormone. Okay? So you have this uh, effect when you have a positive. Their only answer is a prescription medication and then to normalize TSH. If it's abnormal, they keep changing the dosage until they can try to normalize it. Some patients come in and they're chasing TSH for years. They go, one year it's better, one year it's better. It keeps going up and down, up and down. They're changing the dosage all the time, right? When you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. On the other side, when your TSH comes back negative, what that means within normal range. Let's say it comes back within lab ranges, of 0.5 to 4.5 and they consider that normal okay? your TSH is negative it's normal then you have all these symptoms that are associated with Hashimoto's thyroiditis or hypothyroid and what they end up doing is chasing symptoms with medications so let's say someone who has hypothyroid right but their TSH is normal, but they might have a positive, positive TPO or a TG 
or thyroglobulin antibodies, then they're going to say, oh, you're depressed, we're going to give you an antidepressant. We'll see how you feel. They take the antidepressant, maybe it's a little bit better, but not quite. I'm anxious, doctor. When you get Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you might have kind of this waxing and waning of symptoms. Sometimes you feel like you're almost um, hyper, like there's too much thyroid hormone. Then they might give you an anti-anxiety medication, right? Or you have more pain, joint pain, muscle pain, etc. They give you pain medication. And then your menstrual cycle is off because your thyroid hormone is off, right? You gotta remember the thyroid is an endocrine organ, right? It helps your endocrine system. So they might give you, oh, my men menstruation's off? Let's give you an oral contraceptive. And then I'm constipated. They give you a laxative. Well, I can't digest as well. They give you an antacid, right? Sometimes your gallbladder, there's pain in the gallbladder region because there's a sluggish gallbladder. Then if they can't do anything about that, they just remove the gallbladder. Right? This is the insanity. Right? You're within this range, therefore your symptoms don't really matter. We're just gonna medicate whatever symptoms you have. Right? They never look for the underlying cause. You could have silent autoimmunity. You can have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, an autoimmune disease right here, and they don't know, and they're meanwhile, they're just chasing symptoms, giving you medication after medication after medication for each symptom that you might have. And on the flip side, if you're positive, then they're gonna chase your TSH, your thyroid stimulating hormone. So they're gonna give you one medication, that one doesn't work, we'll give you a different one, we're gonna increase the dosage, decrease the dosage. They keep chasing things. They never get to the underlying mechanism of why you have these overt thyroid symptoms, right? And that's problematic. So I hope this little chart explains what is going on, the conventional model of hypothyroid. If the number one cause is an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's thyroiditis, why do they not address that, right? So in our office, we do alternative medicine, functional medicine, integrative medicine, whatever you want to call it, whatever we can do to help a patient, right? So if you have hypothyroid or if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you need to make dietary changes. There's two foods that I'd like you to eliminate from your diet if you have this condition. One is gluten or anything that contains gluten and the other one is dairy. Eliminate those two foods and just see how you feel. Does it make some improvement? For some people, it can be life-changing. For some people, it makes small improvements. But sometimes the thyroid, uh, because uh, the long-standing issues with the thyroid, um, there's other sy systems that are not working correctly because these medications that they're put on um, create other underlying mechanisms and other problems, right? So you have to address those things. So just try that. Gluten-free, dairy-free, if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis or a hypothyroid, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side.